Okay, let's get started. Hello again. Uh, thanks for tuning in. My name is Vijayanti. I head marketing for Zoho Paysense, and I will be the moderator for today's session. This is the first episode of CRO Mastermind, a new webinar series in which we bring conversion optimization experts around the world and enthusiasts like you together. Today we have with us Rachel Pilcher, who will be talking about an important aspect of copywriting. which is how to collect and use the voice of your customers to increase conversion. Rachel is a B2B and SaaS conversion copywriter and a globe trotter as well. An enthusiastic advocate for remote work, she's grown her business while living and traveling across 20 countries since 2016. A small tidbit about her, she's also a squirrel enthusiast and a taco addict. I had a little sneak peek into her slides, and there are some really interesting examples and cute imagery waiting for you. So stay tuned. Before diving into the session, let's do a quick housekeeping check. Please confirm if you can hear me and see my screen fine. Use the raise your hand option on your left, or leave us a comment so we know we are good to go. I hope my uh, audio is fine. My screen is fine as well. If you have any questions for Rachel, leave them in the Q&A tab. I will pick a few at the end of the session, and Rachel will answer them for you. Do follow us on Twitter at Zoho Paysense. Uh, we have recently joined uh, LinkedIn, so you can follow us there as well. Share your thoughts about the webinar using hashtag Ciaro Mastermind. You can also tell us what topics you expect from us in the future webinars. So, without further ado, let's welcome Rachel. She is joining us from New Zealand today. Over to you, Rachel. Thank you. Okay, thanks for um, tuning in, everyone. I know it's quite late for some of you over there. It's mid afternoon New Zealand time. Um, I hope you all find this webinar really useful, whether you're running your own business or if you're trying to get buy-in for a research day at a bigger organisation. So no matter which industry you're in or what your business model is, whether you're in e-commerce or SaaS, B two B. B to C, or if you've got a website or any sort of landing pages going on, user research is incredibly important. So your landing pages and website are your sales machines, and you should not guess what to put on these pages like ever, ever. It is really important that you're doing as much customer research as possible, especially if you're driving paid traffic to your web pages. So here's an overview of what we're going to cover. And um, customer research is a huge topic that covers both qualitative and quantitative data, and I could talk for probably days on all the different ways that you can collect this and how you can use it. So for this talk, we'll purely be focusing on the most effective and easy ways to collect the voice of your customers, and how to put this into action in your copy to increase conversions on your pages. And I've broken this down into three main parts. So first, we'll look at the three easy ways to collect the research that you need, which are interviews. Surveys and your online research. And secondly, and most importantly, we'll look at how to use the customer messages that you've collected, because your research won't help you if you don't implement it. And I speak to a lot of companies that have a ton of customer research, but they actually have no idea how to apply this to their websites to make them work better. Which is kind of important, right? Because if you've got a lot of data, you could be sitting on a gold mine that can really help you get specific with your messaging and hone in on what really, really makes you stand out from your competitors. Okay, and I'll also be sharing a favorite of my uh, few of my favorite books on how to use customer research to improve all corners of your business, and that includes your copywriting, customer retention, positioning, and differentiating your business in the market. And we'll wrap up with the Q and A session. So if you've got any questions that pop up for you as we go along, make sure you write them down because I want lots and lots of questions at the end. Okay, so as I said, I know it's laid out there for a lot of you, so I'm going to try and make this as useful and actionable as possible so that you all stay awake. <laughs> right, let's get rolling. Who am I? That's a question I've asked myself a lot, especially over the last few months because 2020 has been quite weird so far, right? Okay. Anyway, hello. I'm Rachel from Mighty Fine Copy, and I'm a conversion copywriter that specialises in websites and landing page for B2B SaaS. Now, customer research and analysis is at the very heart of what we do as conversion copywriters. So, if you're not familiar with our process and exactly how we work, the research part is how we're able to achieve the best possible conversion results for the companies that we work with. So, first, let's look at all the excuses I hear for not doing research. 
I talked to a lot of founders and marketers from um, pre-launch startups all the way to seriously funded enterprise organizations. And on my calls, I always ask what sort of research they've done in the last 12 months. So how do they get their insights into how do the users think and feel and use their products and services? How do they know what drives people to them and what's driving people away? These are all pretty critical elements to business growth, right? But despite businesses insisting that they're really data-driven, you'd be very surprised how many of these companies of all sizes aren't actually talking to their customers at all. And these are the excuses I hear a lot. We don't know where to start. Um, we don't have a lot of customers or we don't have any customers. Uh, we just don't have the time or resources and we don't want to bug our customers. And my two absolute favorites, we already know what our customers need and we've done customer research, but we just, we don't know how to use it. So the consequences of not doing research. I know it sounds boring and it can feel like there's zero return on your investment for doing research, but if you're not surveying and interviewing customers, you miss out on opportunities. And that's not just opportunities for better page copy and conversions, but for the overall growth of your business. So when you're talking to your customers, you can get stuck in an internal loop with all the assumptions that you and your team have created about who your customers are and what they need and what the outcomes are that they want from your product. So you're actually missing out on these better outcomes for your business and for your audience as well. So things like new products, new directions, new markets that you could tap into, new use cases for your products, all of these developments can spring from the same customer research that you're looking at when you're trying to get your better page copy. So when you start talking and listening to your customers, every moving part of your business can benefit. Okay, so let's look at a quick example. Say you work at TikTok and you're collecting user research and you find a Facebook thread where someone has mentioned that they haven't signed up to your product because they don't want to waste their time but their friend sends them a weekly curated roundup of TikTok videos that they might enjoy. So say this was your company and you saw a strong trend of people talking about how cool a weekly roundup feature would be, it might be worthwhile testing this to see how it could drive customer signups or retention. So it's just little things like these that can pop up during your customer research that you might never have thought of that you can note down to kind of improve your product and expand it in the future. And during your research, you might also discover that your customers aren't quite using your product or service the way you thought they were. This screenshot from the same TikTok thread where someone described them as a great app for sitting on the toilet, which I thought could make quite a good tagline for them. It's probably not what you really want to hear people say about your app, but the reality can often be an eye-opener for your business, and it can help you adjust your positioning and your page messages as well. So what is at the very core of customer research? What are the mechanics of this when it comes to your website and your landing pages? It's simply this. It helps you create a lookalike audience of your very best customers. So you take what you learn in your interviews and your surveys and all your online research and you apply this to your pages to attract, engage and convert more of the same type of people that already love what you're doing. Research lets you step outside your business to see things from your customer's point of view. You know how it is when you're deep in the day-to-day -day running of your business. You forget what it's like to be your customers anymore. So you've got so many biases and assumptions that you've created that it's almost impossible to see things from an outside perspective anymore. So talking to people helps you open your eyes about things like what led them to start looking for a service like yours? Oops, <laughs> what problems they were looking to solve? Why they chose your product? how their lives got better after using your product. And these answers might really, really surprise you. And you might find out why they thought your product sucked and they left you for the competition. Now this bit really hurts, obviously, but it's really useful because it helps you fix problems and you can't fix stuff that you don't know about. So it can help you figure out what's broken in your process, in your messaging, on your pages, which means you can then improve your copy and your service. Um, you can increase your retention rates, reduce churn, and all those other cool things. So it's important to remember always that research and feedback that you're gathering can be really high value, depending whether it's positive or negative, it doesn't matter. Okay, talking to and listening to your customers can improve every single aspect of your business. Um, it helps you improve your sales and marketing copy, create a strong and memorable brand, attract higher quality leads to your pages and um, your offers, 
build deeper relationships with your customers, improve your churn rates, and make better decisions overall about the future of your business. And you can make them faster when you know more of, about what's going on in your customer's mind. It can also reveal that your customers have actually changed, they've evolved as your business has evolved. Um, it might be that your positioning in the market uh, has changed as well, so you need to address that. And the perception of your business in the market might not be what you thought it was either. So you can see how customer research can have really holistic, impactful benefits for every single corner of your business. All right, now on to the good stuff. Three ways to collect your customer research. There's a ton of different ways you can capture the thoughts and feelings and emotions of your customers in their own words, um, and this is the key to higher conversions. So you want to capture the exact words and feelings that will resonate with your ideal audience. And you shouldn't just pick one type of research method. Having three different types of data sets, uh, research surveys and interviews, can help you triangulate your data to draw better conclusions and create better questions to ask as well as you get further into your research. So online review mining oops, gives you a window into your customers' thoughts and feelings towards your business and your competitors' businesses as well. It's kind of like spying on your customers without them knowing, but in a nice way, not in a call the police kind of way. <laughs> Surveys let you create more targeted forms so you can ask very specific questions that will help you reach some defined business goals. And interviews are like your top level gourmet research because those personal one-to-one -one calls get you the absolute best results, and you can interact live and also direct conversations to pull out some fantastic deep insights. And you can get great quotes for testimonials that you can put on your pages as well, and maybe even some case studies. You really just don't know what's going to come out of these um, research drives, but there's always something fascinating. The most important element here is to take a well-rounded approach to all the research that you do. So you're going to need to look at all these different segments. Only talking to happy existing customers just gives you a very one-sided view of your business. If you talk to past customers, they can give you an insight into why people churned out or switched to the competition. The almost customers might be people that, say, um, signed up but didn't use your product, or they took a demo and then decided not to go ahead. So talking to them can help you figure out what their blocks and hesitations were and why they chose not to take things further with you. And of course, check your competition. So looking at competitor reviews online can reveal some really interesting things. And when you're looking at these, you should pay particular attention to the negative reviews that you find. And this can help you pinpoint what you do really well, what your customers aren't so great at. So, for example, say you're in the chocolate industry and you see all these really negative reviews about how your competitor's chocolate melts in people's pockets and in their hands and it's really like gross and disgusting, but your chocolate doesn't do this at all. So you can then take this um, messaging and frame your business in a positive light on your landing page and you can say something like, well, our chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. So from this very small piece of competitor research that you've pulled out, You've got your pain points, you've got the benefits uh, of your own product and the desired outcomes for your customers. They don't want chocolate melting before they eat it. And in this case, it makes a pretty good tagline for your business. So, yeah, uh, online research especially is a really simple way to find out exactly how customers are talking about your business online. Most people spend around uh, six to seven hours a day, I think, online, which is kind of scary. So if that's you, you can probably allocate some of this time to stalking your customers gently and then using what you find to improve your landing page copy. This is also a really good method to gather research when you don't have many customers or you don't have any customers. So there's really no excuses for you not to be doing your user research. First, start by figuring out where your ideal customers are spending their time online. Um, I work in B2B SaaS, so I look at review sites like G2 Crowds, uh, Capterra and Trustpilot can be good sources, um, places like Yelp, uh, Google Business as well. But um, yeah, say you're an e-commerce or retail or a trade, there might be other review and trust sites that can be a magical treasure trove of customer voice for your particular business. Book review sites like uh, Amazon and Goodreads. And I know you're thinking that's really weird and how is that helpful, but you'd be surprised what people actually include in the reviews on books and products that are related to your industry. 
so you can get some really good insights and snippets that you can then weave into your copy. Amazon in particular can be a total goldmine for this. Search engine is of course a nice and easy one. You can try typing in some questions like uh, your company plus review, for example, or your company plus testimonial. But mix up your search terms until you find keywords that work for you. And this can bring up some really good reviews and comments about your business and your competition. Forums are my favorite place to go. Um, Reddit, Facebook, Slack, Twitter, um, any industry specific forums that your customers are likely to hang out in. Reddit as a place is really quite underrated as a forum. Um, this thread's not just about everything you can possibly imagine in there, so that one is well worth checking out. There's also this really nifty Chrome extension, which is called Discussions Button. And you can download this, and it reinstalls the now obsolete Discussions Button uh, that used to be in Google. So you can see up there under the magnifying glass, once you've installed this, there'll be a Discussions tab. And you can just click this to find places that people are discussing you or your competition or any similar apps and products online. So this is a super, super helpful extension. Okay, surveys. So when you're running your surveys, make sure that you start with a goal first. Don't just create some random questions and send them out there. You need to ask the right questions that will then help you reach that goal. So essentially, there's two main types of surveys. There's ones that you can email out to your different customer segments or past customers or your existing list, uh, your main list, and other ones that you can run on your site, like exit pop-ups, uh, intense surveys, net promoter scores, uh, thank you pages, and things like that. And there's a couple of easy, good tools that you can use for these. So we're looking at type form. And this lets you create custom surveys and you can build in really cool things like logic jumps to get higher value responses. And it's got a lot of other handy features built in as well. It's a really solid, nice looking survey tool that a lot of people are already quite familiar with. And as a bonus, it works really well on mobile, unlike some of the other survey tools that are out there. You're probably also familiar, being as you're on a Zoho webinar, um, that the PageSense has a polls tool as well. So you can collect on-page feedback with this around things like, again, net promoter scores, ratings, and feedback questionnaires. Okay, on to my favorite is customer interviews. These are the absolute best when it comes to collecting your voice of customer. Keep them to around 15 minutes long. Um, everyone is busy, you're busy, your customers are busy. So to get maximum buy-in for these interviews and get your customers on a call, tell them it will just be a quick chat. And you'd be surprised what you can actually learn in 15 minutes. Block out a 30-minute window um, just in case each call, just in case your customers are talkers. Some people will have a lot to say, believe me, and you'll be really surprised how many people want an opportunity to have their say about how much they love your product and maybe any little things that could be improved as well. So interviews are the most in-depth and valuable form of research that you can do. And being live on a call with someone is it's just the absolute best. You should direct the call to keep things on track, but it might also segue off into a totally different direction that's even more worthwhile than your questions were. So while it's good to have questions handy, um, be open to digging a bit deeper into certain points that might pop up and reveal interesting things that you hadn't thought of. Don't feel like you're bound to your question script like a complete robot. So when a customer brings up something that's interesting, you can pause the flow of your question to ask little things like, oh, tell me more about that, or what happens after that, or what did that mean for you? So really dig in here on your interviews and find the core problems that can lie underneath those surface level answers that people give you. That's where the, where the real juice is that can bring out the snippets that will drive your conversions on page. Okay. The most, uh, you might find also that you want to do, I'm just skipping back, you might find that you want to do your online research and surveys before you run your interviews, because this means that you can explore some of the points that might come up in those first rounds of lighter research. So without asking leading questions, you can run interviews in a way that gets more in-depth information around pains and objections that you've seen starting to emerge in your initial research. The most important thing on the slide here is to treat your customer interviews like a conversation. It is not a Q&A session. So your customers aren't numbers or dollar signs, right? They're not data points on a graph. You're talking to real life humans that have gone on a really fascinating journey just to do business with you so far. And without them 
or you wouldn't have much of a business, like probably no business. So it's really important that you give people plenty of space on your interviews to talk and just talk while you simply listen. And you'll find that all the good stuff comes out when you're not talking and giving people space to think about things more deeply and give you some really quality answers. Okay, questions to ask your customers. I've got the six uh, main questions that you can ask them. And it's really important that you ask the right questions to get the answers that will drive the copy on your landing pages. So to gather the information that you're going to need, you'll be thinking about questions like these. And this isn't an exhaustive list by any means. It's just a really, really helpful starting point. These are six very basic questions that you can use in both your surveys and your interviews. So when you're looking at um, trying to find out your unique value proposition, you might ask people something like, describe our product or service in your own words. And when you are trying to find out the main pain points that are bugging your customers, you can ask them what was going on in your life or business that made you look for a product or solution like ours. And when you're tapping into the awareness or sophistication of your audience, you can ask things like, did you try any other products before you found us? So it might be that people just found you randomly through a search engine while they were um, Googling their problems and solutions, or it might be they used your competitor products before and didn't like them, and they were looking for an alternative solution. This particular question can help you figure out which buyer stage of awareness people might be at when they come to your landing pages, so you can create more targeted copy that focuses on them. So people might be anywhere from mostly uh, problem aware to completely ready to buy from you. Okay, appeal. Why did you ultimately decide to choose us over someone else? So what hooked them in? What really, really sold them on your solution above everyone else? Then we look at anxieties, which is really important too. Were there any concerns uh, around the messaging on your pages, for example? Was anything unclear? Or was, was it your price? Was there something missing or confusing on your pages? So you can look at addressing these elements in your new copy to make it easier for new businesses to say yes to doing business with you. So that's a really, really useful question. And outcomes, of course, super important. How has your life or business changed since using our product? So people that have reached their desired outcomes um, with your business are incredibly important. And you can just take these messages and frame them in your copy to help drive those conversions. And this can also be expanded on in some cases to turn it into social proof for your pages like testimonials or case studies with your customer's permission, of course. So that's a really important question to be asking. Okay, so these are six key questions that can get you started with your surveys and interviews, and we'll touch on exactly how to use the answers to these in a few slides. So how much customer research do you need? It's a good question, and I get asked this by businesses and also fellow copywriters quite a bit. Um, when do I stop collecting information? Um, how do I know if I've got all the information I need? Like, uh, you know, we've got 20 hours of customer interviews now. Is that going to be enough? Ah, the answer is there is no exact answer. And without getting all mystical and woo-woo, you'll just kind of get a sense when you've got enough. So when you're seeing the same patterns, um, the same words, and the same motivational triggers popping up over and over when you're talking to customers, that's kind of a good time to slow down or stop. It's really easy to go into a complete data collection frenzy, but the result is that you'll just get really overwhelmed. You'll have so, so many um, slides, and um, uh, documents, and templates, and spreadsheets, and all those weird things when it's time to start analyzing your data. So like, if you're a big enterprise company, you could probably go on forever, right? So just collect enough data to reveal really clear patterns around things like the pain points, objections, and outcomes of your customers. The most important thing to remember is that your data set is big enough to make a clear hypothesis around everything. Otherwise, you could be going down the complete wrong track with your copywriting and your business direction, which is just as dangerous to your conversion as not having any data at all. So what I've put here in the bullets is kind of my sweet spot, but obviously this can vary wildly and be more or less of each type of thing, depending on your business. This is just more of a guide to stop you going too crazy about stuff. So five customer interviews, 100 survey responses, and 50 online reviews or comments from forums and um, things like that. And that's usually more than enough to help get you what you need. I find uh, for interviews, there's a point of diminishing returns around like seven or so customer interviews. So three to five interviews is, 
is generally my sweet spot and that's what I aim for. And that doesn't take a lot of time out of your day or your customer's day either. So once you've gathered all your research, it's time to start analyzing everything. Okay, first, hopefully you will have recorded your customer interviews um, so you can pay full attention to what your customers are saying on the call and you're not distracted by taking notes. And when it's time to transcribe these, you can use rev.com and otter.ai. And these are both really good tools in their respective ways. It's just finding one that works best for you. There's uh, quite a few tools out there now for this, so take some free trials and find one that suits you the best. Then copy and paste the answers to your surveys, uh, your interview text, and your online research word for word into a document. And depending what you're used to using, this could be something like Google Docs, um, Google Slides, uh, sorry, <laughs> well, slides on the brain, um, Google Sheets, Airtable, or Notion. Resist the urge to paraphrase what your customers have said. Um, using the exact words that your customers use helps you talk like they talk when you're writing your pages. And this is the essential, essential part. I cannot stress that part enough because this is where the magic of conversion copywriting lives. Okay, so you want to make a list of words that customers frequently use when they talk about your product or service. Finding these words is really important. It helps you connect with your audience and it also can help you develop your brand voice if you haven't paid much attention to that in the past. So do your customers use a lot of uh, industry jargon? Do they use like uh, cool kid slang? Or do they use quite casual language? Or are they sassy? Are they using high level, more formal language? And every business will get different results and different words that they can pull out of this. So you're looking for sticky messages, that's kind of our term for it. These are ones that stand out and are really memorable. Um, it's kind of a judgment call on your part when you're at this point. So once you've read through all the voice of customer data you've collected, you'll find that words and phrases will literally just start to jump out at you as being more important or more memorable than all the others. Common threads will emerge and you'll start hearing the same phrases and problems over and over. And every start, so often you'll come across a customer comment that really perfectly captures what a lot of other customers are trying to say. So save those kind of um, gold-plated comments in a separate place, a separate tab in your spreadsheet or something like that. You'll also be surfacing some really useful insights around how your customers think, what they feel, and how they use your product. And you're particularly looking for things that your customers say about um, pain points. So why did they seek out a solution like yours? What almost stops them from becoming your customer? Uh, needs and desires. How do they see your product particularly? It's helping them reach their end goals and fix those problems. And outcomes. Like how did things improve for customers after they bought from you? So if you're using the six questions we just looked at before, you'll be able to pull these um, phrases straight out from those answers and paste them directly into your spreadsheet. So it's quite easy when you're using those six questions as a guide. In your document, create columns for every theme that you're tracking, like pain points and outcomes and so on. And paste every phrase, again, word for word, no paraphrasing, that matches up with each theme until you've got lists of phrases that talk about pain points, lists that talk about outcomes, and so on. So you'll end up with something looking like this. I use uh, Google Sheets and they get really complex and messy and pretty embarrassing with uh, lots of themes and tabs and bits and pieces all over the place. So I've just mocked this one up as a really uh, basic layout example. And you can see how easy it is to just copy and paste any snippets that fit into each theme in the relevant column here. So we've got one for pain points and then you can just copy and paste um, problems for your customers like I was tired of stuff being all over the place. Hesitations, you might have um, problems around pricing or things like that in an app. Needs and desires, I was really desperate from, for an all-in-one solution. And obviously outcomes meant someone was really happy they're spending less time on admin and have more time to do other stuff. And there's really uh, great little tools that can help you when it comes to analyzing your customer voice. The first one is a tone analyzer, which is a really handy tool. Um, you can just Google these online. There's lots of free things around out there. And you can just paste a whole bunch of text in here to get an overview of the tone that customers are using when they talk about your product. So are they using language that's joyful, tentative, fearful, or excited, for example? 
when you're writing out your new copy for your landing pages, you can actually adjust the tone that you're using to change or mirror people's perceptions, and that helps improve the effectiveness of your copy. Plus, when you've written out your new copy, you can run it back through this tone analyzer to see how it matches up, see if you're on the right track. Remember that you're trying to reflect the exact voice of your ideal customers to attract that high quality lookalike audience. So matching the tone and emotions they use already can play a big part in that on-page connection that you want to create. Text analyzers, right. So we're just talking about how you're looking for recurring words and phrases that you see over and over from your customers. And the text analyzer is a tool where you can paste a bunch of text in it and it will pull out things like most used words in that text, which saves a ton of time manually skimming everything and pulling out those separate words. So it's super helpful. And you can also use a word cloud tool that does the same thing. If you're more of a visual person, this is a great shortcut. Um, it pulls out the most used words in a large bunch of text. As you can see here, I've done one for Basecamp. So I just basically cut and pasted all the words from Basecamp's homepage. And as you can see, the biggest, most used word here is obviously Basecamp, which makes sense because it's their page. And then you'll see how the words start decreasing in size around that, at the less frequently that they're used. So you can run all your voice of customer data through this to save a lot of time and also pull out those magic words and put them into your spreadsheet. Okay, so once you've done all this um, hard labor, <laughs> It's time to think about how to apply the voice of customer data to your pages. So once you've bucketed all the snippets and quotes and words that you've collected, it should start to become really clear where your current copy might be missing the mark in terms of things like addressing pain points, um, getting clear on your value prop, and showing the true benefits of your products and services to your audience. So the data you've collected can help you find the value in your product as seen and experienced by your customers that you can put directly onto your pages in their own words. And you can address the common objections that people have before buying from you. So again, you can talk about those questions right on your page and meet people exactly where they're at in their bio journey. So what you've essentially captured with all your research are the thoughts and worries and problems going on in your customers' minds in their own words right now. And when you put those phrases and words on your page, you've already created that really important first impression when a new visitor lands there. It's like you've magically read their minds, right? You, you speak their language, you even use the words they use, and you totally get where they're at right now. So with your new copy, you've already started to establish that interest and the trust in your product and the, the trust in your friend from the moment that someone arrives on your page. And I know what you're thinking, blah, blah, blah. Where do I use these magic words and phrases? It's a really good question, and the answer to that is simply absolutely everywhere. So headlines, subheaders, section headers, testimonials, product descriptions, emails, blogs, social media ads, CTA buttons, um, absolutely everywhere. Your customer research will keep on giving, and you can weave it into all of your content, all of your sales copy, all of your marketing copy. So remember that lots of people, when you're thinking about web pages, will skim them. So people should be able to easily pick up on the benefits and pain points that you've worked so hard to find when they're scrolling through your pages. So that's why section headers here are so necessary. You also need to think about what's called a messaging hierarchy. So when you're laying out your pages, prioritize what you've found in your customer research that matters most to them and start with the most important messages that you're seeing at the top of your pages, and then work your way down from there. Okay, let's look at a few page examples. We're just taking a look at a couple of SAS headers. Header sections are the first point of true connection with your prospects. They really hook people in and get them to keep scrolling to the next section. People lose interest really fast when they're online, so if your header isn't clear or specific enough, people often won't bother reading past this. They'll just bounce out and go somewhere that's more interesting. So Basecamp, the SaaS company that every company wants to grow up and be. And I totally understand that because they're not afraid to continually test things out in their messaging that go against every so-called best marketing practice out there. With their current header section, it's clear that they've done a ton of customer research. There's basically a massive wall of text here, which is like a huge no-no for pretty much every industry header right now, but it really works here. And the amount of customer voice that they've jammed into this tiny space is 
quite impressive actually. So you can see how all of the copy on screen might have been pulled straight from reviews, surveys or interviews and just pretty much pasted straight into the section. The header, the subhead, the testimonials, they're all things that can easily be lifted word for word from your customers. For example, the headline might have been taken straight from an answer to a question like, describe our product in your own words. That was your UVP question from earlier on. And the sub subhead underneath directly states the before and after scenarios for customers. They've literally just said before us and after using us. So this text would be pulled from the snippets that were collected around pain points in the before section. And the after section would come from asking people how their lives got better after using Basecamp. And for some businesses, it, it can really be that simple. But you have to get creative about things as well and frame things in the right way to really talk to your people. So Hotjar, you can see a simpler version of how your research can be used in this example. So you might have voice of customer snippets in your spreadsheet saying things like, um, I loved the fast visual results that we were getting. Uh, it helped us really understand our users. It helped us make the right changes on our website. And uh, it, it helped us uncover new insights, for example. So all of those separate phrases can be then stitched together to make a clear, specific value proposition and subheadline so that when prospects land on the page, they know exactly what the product does, who it's for, and what the most tangible benefits are. You'll also notice here that the language is you and yours, and it's on this one as well. So your website copy should always read like you're talking face to face with one customer. So take out any words like our or we that are floating around on your pages and replace them with customer facing language like you and yours wherever possible. Cool, so I know we've got a couple of e-commerce examples. I, I know there's a few e-commerce people tuning in here. Now, the most important thing that e-commerce stores need to focus on is overcoming purchase objections. So you really need to dig into all those pain points and hesitations that you've found in your research and make sure you've addressed these on your landing pages and also on places like um, fact pages and product pages. So you want to eliminate all the questions about your business that are going on in your customers' minds when they land on your page. This first one here is Marley Spoon, which is a meal prep service. And it obviously has some amazing drooly food photos at the top to get people nice and hungry when they land on the page. But what it also does is clearly and visually lay out the value prop and there's a list of overall benefits for customers. So you can see how they might have used customer voice here. Common pain points might be, um, you know, we're struggling to find inspiration. We're struggling to find time for more creative meal planning. And there was also a need to save time, energy, and money that might have been coming up quite consistently as well. Plus, they also want a solution that's simple. I'm not too sure about the it's easily delicious uh, section header there at the bottom, but if a customer has actually said that word for word, it might be worth testing out. We always test things. So further down the page, we've got some bullets here and a simple sentence under each one. So these still statements could have been pulled from phrases around anxieties and hesitations about subscribing, like, um, I'm not sure where the food comes from. Um, is it organic? Will it suit me if I'm vegan? Is it fresh? Like, how do I know it's fresh? Um, are the recipes easy because I'm not a very good cook? So all of these potential objections to purchase have been really clearly addressed here uh, in a visual way, answering the common questions that people might have about this company to really bust through all those objections that would be coming up in someone's mind when they hit your page. You'll notice the CTA here is bright and relevant to the company as well, and it's got a really clear directive. Start cooking, it's quite cool. And if I recall, this landing page was converting at 25% as well, so that's a, quite a good result. They've really done a good job here. Next up, we've got the solo stove to keep this on a food theme because I'm getting hungry actually, <laughs> talking about food. So let's quickly look at how solo stove have used customer voice here. I actually have one of these stoves and they're really quite excellent for camping. Research has obviously been done here that led to the creation of this new product. Um, and I would guess that a few happy campers have set things on fire that weren't meant to be on fire. So that's led to them expanding their range with this flame guard. Cool, but this is a section I really want to draw your attention to further down the page. But the thing about being an e-commerce as well is that you have the unique ability to address your customer objections using photos and multimedia. You're not just relying on text. 
So a lot of shoppers will just skim over text and bullet points and they can miss key details that you worked so hard to put in there. So use the customer questions that you found in your research and address those visually as well. And this can really strengthen your chances sorry, <coughs> at page conversions. So imagine your research dug up common questions like, um, I'm not sure what the stove actually does. Um, where do I store it? Um, can I still roast my wieners in there? And um, so when you scroll down the page, you'll see how all of these things have been addressed graphically and this little small amount of text you can see there with a white arrow. So there's a photo of wieners and you see that everything nests inside the stove and it shows how the product works. So using the visuals as well as text can help you counter objections in a really, really nice way on your econ pages. Okay, I think I'm running out of time here, but um, just a last tip, once you've put all your research onto your pages and your copy and you're happy with everything and you've launched it, don't forget to test things. It's really, really important. Um, these are two of my favorite tools that, that actually get real people to take your new copy for a test drive. So we've got usertesting.com, and this site lets you get feedback from real customers in real time, and you can watch them moving through your website, which is really mesmerizing actually, so you can see how they engage with your messaging or product and pinpoint anything that might be missing or confusing to them. This one's a really, really great tool. There's also um, five second tests that you can run and you can find one of them on usabilityhub.com and I think there's also a site still called fivesecondstest.com. These are also known as blink tests and they can help you ensure that the first impressions of people that land on your page are the right ones because often when you've been working on pages for a while, it turns out that you haven't been quite as clear as you thought you were with everything. So getting a five second test from real users can help you get a lot more specific and clear with what you're trying to say and how you're saying it. And remember that conversion optimization isn't a once and done thing. You, you really need to keep up your research as you go along and your business evolves and keep optimizing your page copy as your business and, and your customers change. Um, I think some of the other webinars in this series are talking more in depth about um, the structure and headlines and things that go into the landing pages. So you can take everything you've learned here about customer research and apply them when you're going through those next trainings. Okay, so if you are really interested in learning more about customer research and how to apply it and how to use it to find great ideas and improve your business positioning and product positioning and strengthen your customer relationships, I highly recommend you check out these books. Finding the Right Message by Jen Havis. Um, she's a, a fellow copywriter and she's actually literally written a book on uh, how to use customer research and improve conversions. It's amazing. I, I totally recommend if you get one, it's going to be that one. There's also Made to Stick, which has a, a great um, set of ideas around well, creating ideas that work and ideas that stick in people's minds and the ones that become memorable and long lasting. There's obviously Awesome by April Dunford, which is a masterclass in positioning your business and positioning your product to sell. And there's also Different by Young Me Moon, which I've just read recently, and that's really good if you're thinking about how to try and really differentiate yourself in the market and stand out in your industry as someone that's doing fun, different, interesting, powerful things. Okay, and that's about it. So if you want to get in touch or follow me on social, you can find me on Twitter at Mighty Fine Copy or at my website and I'm also on LinkedIn if you want to learn more or you've got any other questions that we don't get around to. All right, Q&A time, over to you. Uh, thank you Rachel, that was an amazing session, we had a lot of insights. I'm sure a lot of uh, copywriting enthusiasts including myself would be waiting to implement these concepts soon. So thank you once again. Uh, let's take up some questions now. Sure. Uh, we have one. Um, what would you recommend as a best customer research method for that space with low traffic? Um, no traffic. That would be definitely online research. I'm not sure if they've got customers or not already. Um, if you've got customers, then just be doing the in interviews and surveys. Otherwise, go deep in the online research. Um, look at what other companies in your market are doing, look at your competitors, and um, yeah, just really dig into forums and things and see what you can pull out from there. Okay. So among all the methods you've discussed, which is one go-to method that has always helped you understand your customers more? 
absolutely interviews, if you can get on a phone call or a Zoom call um, with, a, with an actual person one-to-one -one and just have a, you know, a chat with them, a, a good person-to-person -person conversation, that is absolutely where all the gold lies in there. There is nothing that compares to that. It's totally worth your time. Okay. So uh, just curious, which medium has worked out for you? Um, how do you get those interviews done? So do you reach out by email or I uh, just, by yeah, I, I, I sort of act as a consultant on this. I will usually send an email template out to a client and um, just get them to send that to the customers that they kind of want to get in touch with and then they'll just book a time on my calendar and we take it from there. So I, I try and make it quite hands-off for the client as well. Um, the companies that I work with and just and just deal with the customers and the customer interviews um, as much as I can by myself, just to take everything off the client's plate and do it for them. Okay. Uh, then should we conduct a customer research before writing every landing page or during a feature release? Any best practices that you follow? Um, it depends if you're doing a landing page for a wildly different segment or a, a new product or something like that. So if, if you've done some research and it doesn't quite fit and with the new landing page product or segment that you're targeting, that's always good to do a bit of very focused research, particularly relating to that landing page. Okay. How often should we conduct a customer research? Um, I, at least every 12 months, yeah. If you can do it sort of as you go along, that's great. Um, but yeah, I think because your business changes quite quickly and you might have released new products and you might have sort of branched into new markets and things like that. So really, yeah, every 12 months at least, I would say, if not mm -hmm. even more than that. Okay. Uh, there's another question. Uh, what are your recommendations when you believe your audience is mainly much older and not very digital? Um, again, I would be trying to talk with them in person if you can, just to um, you know find out more of their thoughts and feelings about things. So, uh, how do you substantiate the research time for copywriting? How marketers accept this methodology? I'm not really sure what you're trying to say. Is that like how do we validate our the, the amount of time and effort that we put into research? Uh, Arun, can you rephrase the question for us, please? So I can also give you microphone access if you want. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, do you want to ask the question yourself? Okay. Yes, Arun, go ahead. Hello. Hey, how are you? Hey, hi. Um, yeah, it's a wonderful session. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm amazed that how much of research is going behind copywriting. So I'm a part of the profession, so I think um, I'll rephrase the question what I was trying to ask. As marketers, we're always, uh, you know, uh, uh, working things with a limited time. And especially when you reach out to a new client where you do copywriting, and then you take a sizable amount of time to do your research. So how it's being viewed? Uh, is this methodology is very successful or they kind of say that it's only a copywriting so it might not need a lot of uh, customer research and then you can do it. Um, it sort of depends like you can do light research and you might you might just say online research will be enough or we'll send out surveys and, and just do one or two interviews or you might want to do a ton of work and uh, really get stuck in there and I sort of allow two weeks to research, but if it's really intensive and you've got a lot of segments and a lot of um, products to kind of um, find your way around, it can take a lot longer. So yeah, it just depends on the complexity of the product and the depth of research that you want to get into on that. All right. I think I have, uh, this leads to me in another question that I have. So uh, I see that you have worked with both uh, business to business and business to consumer uh, businesses. So I've seen that you've worked for Basecamp, which has largely been I used, you know, I used Basecamp for my work. Uh, I'm a B2B marketer, and I see that you've also done copywriting for um, Western businesses. So, in both of these cases, how much of research is is uh, does your research requires different times for these two entities, or how it's been viewed in both of these uh, industries? Okay, I haven't actually worked for these specific companies, but I have done a lot of B2C and a lot of B2B and e-commerce work over the, the last few years. So 
I, I think it takes roughly the same amount for me, but again, like I said, if, if the product is complex and it has lots of different arms and things like that, it will take a little longer if you're digging into the research for each of those separate branches. But generally, I think if you're looking for a time frame like two to three weeks, yeah, it'll always always allow a little bit longer than you think you'll need. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Things won't go quite as you planned, so yeah. All right, yeah, thank you. Cool, oh, thanks. Okay, so we have one more question from Steven. Hi, Digital, we are developing disrupting innovation. So there are no present customers. How do you do the research and copywriting? Okay, so the best, um, absolutely, you've got no customers, obviously, so you'll be looking at your competitors in the market, and you'll be going and looking at their websites, and you'll be going and digging into any reviews that you can find about them online, and you'll be looking at um, a similar products, and what else is going on in the industry. So places like Reddit, uh, Facebook groups, things like that. So anywhere you can find where those customers or your customers will be living online and talking about things, go there and just start pulling as much voice of customer data as you can out of there. And also the Amazon thing as well could be handy depending what sort of industry you're in. And then, yeah, you just apply everything to the spreadsheet method like I laid out briefly, and then you start building your page based on that. Okay, looks like we don't have uh, any more questions. So, I'm, yes, happy answer, I'm happy to answer any questions on, on LinkedIn or by email later on. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, yeah, come to the end of the session. Uh, so if you have any more questions, like uh, Rachel mentioned, please do reach out to her on LinkedIn or Twitter. She's pretty active on social media. So before closing the session, uh, I just want to announce that we have another webinar on copywriting coming up next week. So this is by James E. Turner, co-founder and CRO director at Snap Copy. So I will send you an email uh, after the session. We'll also send the recording. We look forward to having you there as well. So thank you so much for joining in. Bye-bye.